Hello everyone, my name is Brandon from Nagios, and today we're going to cover the four installation methods of Nagios XI so that you can start monitoring your mission critical assets quickly. We'll first walk through the steps on installing it using an OVA file for VMware Workstation. Then we will install it through Hyper-V. Next, we will go through setting it up on ESXi. And finally, we will walk through manually installing it on a Linux machine. So let's get started. First thing we're going to start off with is the OVA file for Microsoft and VMware Workstation. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to navigate to nagios.com and we'll scroll down until we see Nagios XI right here. We'll click download free trial. In here, we'll go into a VMware. So download for VMware. And we'll be downloading the OVA file for Workstation Pro right here at the top. Now you'll notice that if you go under Microsoft, you'll notice there's another OVA file here. These OVA files are the exact same, so it does not matter which one you install. Once you click the download now button, you'll put in all your information here and you'll click download. You'll be redirected to a download screen. I already have the OVA file here on my machine. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and switch over to VMware Workstation. Prior to following the next steps here, please have your VMware set up and ready to receive a VM. Since this is a OVA file, all we need to do here is click open a virtual machine. We will then need to navigate to where we have it saved. There it is right here. We'll click open. Now here you can name your virtual machine, whatever you would like it to be. For the sake of this example, I'm going to name it XI. And below it, you can change the storage installation path by clicking browse. For the sake of this example, I'm going to leave this default. Once we are satisfied with our selection here, we'll click import. As you can see here, XI has finished building the virtual machine. Right here are some pre-selected specifications for our virtual machine. As you can see here, it is bridge, which means it'll automatically connect to our network. If this is an offline installation, you may want to click edit virtual machine and disable the network adapter. We recommend you use at least two gigabytes of memory or RAM here and at least two processors or cores. If you're satisfied with these specifications, we can click power on this virtual machine and VMware will finish building the XI virtual machine. All right, the XI virtual machine has finished building. As you can see here at the top, we have an IP address along with some default credentials. The first thing we're gonna to need to do here is go ahead and use those default credentials provided by the XI VM and log into it. So we will use root and Nagios XI. All right, now that we're logged in with our desired web browser, we will go ahead and navigate to our virtual machine here. And as you can see here, you're redirected to the XI page. You can click access Nagios XI and you can begin walking through the final installation process here. For the sake of this video, since we're going over installations, we won't be covering these final steps here. We have great documentation on how to get through these steps though, which we will have linked in the description below. Next, we're going to walk through setting this up using Hyper-V. Again, we are navigating to nagios.com. And for this one, we're gonna be going into Microsoft. And we're gonna be downloading this VHD file right here. So we'll click download now. Again, just like the OVA file, we'll enter in all of our information and click download. We'll be redirected to a download page and we will get it installed. Again, I already have this file installed right here, ready to go. Prior to these upcoming steps here, please have Hyper-V set up and ready for a virtual machine. We're gonna go ahead and open up Hyper-V, make this full screen. And the first thing we're gonna do is go up to this action menu up here and click new and virtual machine here. We'll click next on this first page. And we're gonna name our virtual machine. Similar to the VMware Pro Workstation, I'm going to go ahead and just name it XI. 
If you would like to change the storage location of this virtual machine, you can check this box here, click browse, and change your desired storage location. For the sake of this example, I'm going to leave it default. We'll click next. This is a generation one VM, so we'll click next again. Now by default, the Hyper-V gives us 1024 megabytes. We recommend at least two gigs of RAM, which will be 2048 megabytes. We'll click next. If this is an offline machine, keep it as not connected. This is going to be an online machine for us, so we're going to switch this to default switch. We'll click next. Now, since we downloaded the VHD, we'll select this second option down here, which is use an existing virtual hard disk. And we will click browse over here to the right, and we will need to navigate to where we saved the VHD file. Mine is saved in a folder called Nagios. Here it is right here. We'll click it and click open and then we'll click next. And here we have the specifications that we gave the virtual machine. And if you are dissatisfied with any of these, you can click back on this left hand pane here and you'll be brought back and you can select what you desire. We're satisfied here, so we'll click finish and Hyper-V is going to begin building this VM. On the right hand side, we'll see the name of our VM, ours is XI. We're going to click start, this third option here, and then we will click connect as well. Just like the VMware Pro Workstation, we were given a IP address along with some default credentials. We're going to do the exact same thing we did earlier, which is log in using those default credentials. So we'll go root and Nagios XI. Now that we're logged in, Minimize this and switch over to our desired web browser once again. And we will plug in that IP address that we were given by the XI virtual machine. And just like before, we'll click access and begin walking through the final installation process here. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and look at getting XI installed on a ESXi instance. Again, we are navigating to Nagios.com, going to XI, and going into VMware Workstation right here. Now, if you downloaded the OVA file earlier, these two OVAs are the exact same, so there is no need to reinstall it. However, if this is your first time seeing this page for this OVA here, you'll need to click download now, plug in all your information, and you will be redirected to a downloads page. I already have this OVA file from earlier, so I don't need to download it. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and navigate to our vSphere here. And at the top, we'll go menu and click VMs and templates. And we will right click on our data store and click deploy OVF template. Since we downloaded the OVA file, we will just click local file, click choose files, and we will need to navigate to where we have the OVA file saved. Again, I have mine saved in a folder called Nagios. We will click open and click next. We will need to name our virtual machine. Our ESXi instance has a naming scheme, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. You can name it whatever you would like and then select your desired storage location. For the sake of this example, I'm going to leave mine right here at the top. We'll click next, click next again. We'll click next, select where you would like to store this. Again, I'm gonna leave mine right here. We'll click next. This is going to be a bridged connection. If this is going to be an offline installation, please make sure that you have your network disconnected. We'll click next once more here. And this is the summary page showing all the specifications of the virtual machine. If you are dissatisfied with any of these settings, you can navigate back to the specific area on the left-hand side here where you can change your settings to what you desire and change it. When you are satisfied with your specifications of the virtual machine, you can click Finish. And as you can see right here at the bottom, the virtual machine is building and getting ready to deploy. So now as you can see right here at the bottom, our virtual machine is building. And what's gonna happen here is we're gonna get a question. As you can see at the bottom of our screen here, the VMs have finished building. We'll click on the left-hand side here, we'll click the name of the virtual machine. 
and we'll click the green play button to power it on. Again at the bottom we'll get a status bar of the powering of our virtual machine. If you get this question here, you'll click answer question, click no, and click OK. The virtual machine will finish powering on. And where it says powered off here, we will get what looks like a Linux terminal. We'll be able to click it and maximize the screen of our virtual machine. As you can see here, the virtual machine has finished powering on. We will click it into the console here and we'll click web console and we'll click OK. Just like before, we were given a IP address along with some default credentials. We're going to do the exact same thing we did earlier using those default credentials. So we'll go root and Nagios XI. And with our desired web browser, we can navigate to that IP address. And we will begin the final installation process of XI. The final thing we are going to look at today is manually installing XI onto a Linux machine. XI can be manually installed onto CentOS, Ubuntu, Debian, and RHEL, or Red Hat distributions. Before we get started, I want to mention that I have two CentOS 8 VMs spun up and ready to go. I have two since there are two installation methods for manual installs. There is a quick installation method and a more manual installation method. I will first walk through the quick installation method. In the command line, you'll just have to put in this command here. And what this will do is download the latest version of XI. It will also install it. If you would like to specify which instance of XI you would like to install, you'll need to navigate to nagios.com, click XI, and go to the alternative downloads page where you can then specify which version of XI you'd like to download. We'll hit enter here and this will begin installing XI. Now while this runs, I'm going to switch over to our other virtual machine here. This one has nothing on it yet. This is going to be for our more manual installation. Again, reminder, this is a separate virtual machine from the quick installation. For the manual installation, we'll first need to change directories to the slash TMP directory. So we'll do CD slash TMP. And the next thing we'll need to do is get the latest release of XI. Now, since this is a CentOS 8 machine, CentOS does not have the wget command by default. So make sure you have that command installed. This will download the latest XI tarball. Now that we got the tarball downloaded, we will need to extract it. So we will use this command here. And I just did tab to complete. Hit enter. Now that the tarball is extracted, we will need to change directories into the newly created Nagios XI directory. Just like that. And in here, we will need to bash the full install script like so. Now what we're going to do is let these two virtual machines install XI for us. All right, as you can see here, the first virtual machine that we are looking at is the one where we did the quick installation. Right here at the bottom, there is an IP address here. With this install, there won't be any default login credentials. They will just be the credentials of the virtual machine when you set up the Linux box. So what we're going to go ahead and do is navigate to that IP address using our desired web browser. So we will go ahead and open that up and we will go to that IP. Just like before, we'll get an XI screen where we can finish walking through the final installation process. Switching back over, we'll go to our more manual install of XI. Just like before, at the bottom is an IP address provided by XI. And just as stated before, there is not going to be any default login credentials. The credentials will be the credentials of the Linux box when you first set it up. Once again, we can navigate to that IP address in our desired web browser, and we'll be brought to the same page here where we can finish walking through the final installation process of Nagios XI. 
I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or would like to request a demo, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at sales at nagios.com or visit our website nagios.com. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.